Are prestigious, are prestigious schools like designer jeans when applying for medical school or does where you or does where you go determine what jobs you can get slash how much you can make? I think to sort of clarify that, when when applying to medical school in the first place, does it matter what school what school you went to for undergrad? And the second one, um, does your where you do your postdoc or your doc doctorate does that matter when applying for for jobs? And if so, how much? Mm -hmm. So, Katie, we can go with you. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I guess just uh, off that, I think none of us are medically trained, so I don't know. My <laughs> my experience will be specific to grad school, um, mm -hmm. but uh, I think, you know, for grad school in particular, um, it's kind of less the school and more the specific lab that you train in. Um, and mm -hmm. so, you know, kind of big name schools tend to have, you know, big name labs. So it's, it's probably correlated to some extent, uh, but there's also, you know, you can get great training at, you know, you know, if, if there's a lab that's a good fit for you, that's more important than going to like the best name school. Um, so I think that's something that's a little bit different maybe than, you know, grad school or law school where, you know, I think it does, maybe the name carries more weight. Um, I don't know if you guys have anything else to add, but um, I think there's lots of different paths, you know, and so I think for grad school in particular, it's really about, you know, what specific research you want to do and what's the best path for that. Mm -hmm. Chris, does it matter the name of the, the school when applying to jobs, like after you've done your sort of your doctorate, or does, or like once you get to that point, is the field so specific and narrow that it kind of doesn't really matter at that point? There's only a handful of schools that have that particular sort of program. Is it kind of yeah. the, is, is kind of that one? Yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, I mean, at least when I, so when I look at resumes, I'm um, fairly uninterested with the name of the school. Um, you know, once you've got the degree, then I'm more interested in your publication record and I'm more interested in projects you've worked on and who you've worked with. Mm -hmm. So like Katie said, you know, I'll, I'll look at who your parent lab was, you know, who was your mentor? Do I know them? Do I know anybody who knows them? Um, and same thing for a postdoc, right? Like, do I know, do I know this name? And then I can kind of, I can do a little bit of diving, right? So I can look in to see what this lab has published and do I like their data? Do I not like their data? Do I think they do good, well with methods or not? Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a chance in sort of the interview process too for, I mean, at least what I always try to do is try to, to quiz people on their technical skills, right? And so I always ask like a pretty awkward question, but I've learned to just commit to it, which is, you know, I'm going to give you whatever the technique is. Um, you know, let's say I handed you a vial of cells. Now I want you to walk me through how you would do whatever this thing is in as much excruciating detail as possible, right? Like just tell me every single step. Um, and a lot of people shy away from that, right? They're like, I don't really want to bore you. I'm like, no, bore me. Give me every number, how many times you pipe, give me the whole thing. Um, because your, your hands and your technical skills are far more important to me than your credentials. Um, and I think that's probably true in a lot of companies. I mean, I, I would be amiss at saying that there aren't people who look at your resume and kind of do the old boys club thing. Where they're like, oh, you know, you're from whatever school. Um, but I think you don't want to be employed by those people. Or at least I don't want to be employed by those people. Right? Right. So, um, yeah. Well, if anyone listening is thinking of applying to Werewolf anytime soon, Chris is giving away his interview secrets. So. <laughs> <laughs> right? Give me all the details. <laughs> That's my one tip. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, have you sort of found similar things to what the other two mentioned? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, to speak to my own personal experience, um, I did my undergraduate work at, at James Madison University in Virginia, which I enjoyed. It's a good school. It's got a, a good science program. I don't know a lot of people that would call that a massively large name school. Uh, I think if you went to the West Coast, they'd say where, right? So that being said, after I graduated, I went and worked in a lab uh, with a guy named Chuck Drake for four years uh, post-graduation. And then at that point, I applied to graduate school and, and had a, you know, not to toot my own horde, but had a fairly successful interview cycle, had a couple of options on the table, which I appreciated. Uh, and a lot of that, I think, was due to my experience, due to the people I met, due to Chuck's recommendation letters, due to a bunch of kind of intangible elements that are, are separate from your degree and your GPA and all these things. It's really the experience, as, as Katie and Chris said. Uh, what lab were you in? What projects were you involved with? Who did you meet? Who was willing to vouch for you? Uh, and these are things that you can get by joining a lab and getting these experience. And again, this is on the graduate PhD side. I don't, I can't speak to the medical side. Um, but I do know it seems like a lot of people would rather have a, a reputable person write you a letter of recommendation and say, hey, 
this person is awesome. I worked with them for two to four years. I really appreciated them uh, and they'd be good in your school. And, and that can go an incredibly long way um, when compared to something like a name named school. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, I think like Chris said, you know, you're going to find people out there who are going to look for the Harvard, the Yale, the, um, you know, Stanford and some of these other places that have fantastic names. And they're going to say, you came from there, therefore I'm interested. But I think there's a ton of excellent programs and excellent labs and excellent schools out there that will very seriously consider anybody if they've had good experiences in labs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't think a name is a, a kiss of death. I think it's, it's helpful, right? But at the end of yeah. the day, uh, your lab experience is probably the number one thing that matters. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. 